High Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled Ordeal of Terror. Gunston, superbikes at ball door. You scratch hard round the bend, turn it on to 270 Ks and you're out front, untouchable. You're close to the things men rate great, like Gunston Toasted. Gunston cigarettes are made from the best tobaccos a man can get for that rich, rewarding, toasted taste. Get closer to flavor with Gunston Toasted. I bought it with my slice. Come on into the MBS and get your slice. I got it in a trice. It's easy with your slice. I got my slice. They treat you very nice. Come on into the MBS and get your slice. It cost a pretty price, but I got it with my slice. Come on into the MBS and get your slice. My name is Bob Ridgway. I own a fair-sized farm at the foot of the Drakensberg Mountains. It's a very quiet place to live, but I like it. I'm not a farmer at heart, really, so I employ a manager while I continue with my profession as an author. In this, my wife, Susan, is a great help, typing up fair copies and doing most of the research work. Our two children, Martin, who is 12, and Julie, 11, go to boarding school in the city. They love it. And I think they appreciate the country more when they come home during the school holidays. It was something that happened during their holidays that prompts me to tell you this story. Very early one morning, I drove down to Durban. Wasn't due back until late that afternoon, unfortunately. Martin and Julie were playing at the back of the house. <laughs> That's not fair, Marty. It is, and I should know. Anyway, let's go on out, and we can take a look round down by the bottom pasture. Mum doesn't like us going so far from the house. I don't know why not. Oh, let's go just the same. There's nothing there to be scared of. Come on, Julie. Oh, all right, but... Where are you two sneaking off to? Hi, Mum. Uh, oh, we're just going to play around the front. That's right, isn't it, Julie? Yes, that's right, Mum. All right, then. But don't be straying off. Don't worry. Are we going to go all the way down to the fence? Of course. But it's so far, right down by the road. That's all right, I know the way. Come on, slow coach, I'll race you to the first fence. <laughs> <laughs> that had been nine in the morning. Meanwhile, in town at the City National Bank, a deadly drama was being played out. Two masked men had walked in and leveled machine guns at the staff and the few customers who were being served. And that's just a warning. All of you keep your hands in your heads. Okay, hurry up, Frank. Just get where you can. I'm doing my best, man. Don't take any new notes. Right, that's all the doors cleaned out. Okay, leave it at that. Come on. Come on, let's get out of the heck out of here. I'll go out first and cover you, Tiger. Yeah, you do that. Move it. None of you make a move to chase us, huh? Okay, Tiger. All clear. Right, Jay. Step on it. We were lucky. <laughs> Just picked a time when no one was coming into the bank. You were quick? Well, that's the way to do these things. If you linger around, you get that fuzz in your neck. Just grab the nearest cash and get out. Oh, darn these robots. So far, everyone's been against us. <laughs> that's the way it is when you're in a hurry. Just drive slow and easy, Jane. The tension's the last thing we want to attract. Even when we get out of town and onto the freeway, keep down your speed, okay? It's all right, Tiger. I know how to drive. 
Sit back, relax, and leave it all to me. Okay, okay, sunshine. I'll do just that. Well, now, Frank, we can take a small vacation up at my place in the burg for a couple of weeks. When do we hit the next bank, Tiger? Well, if we do one every two weeks, it'll be just about right. I reckon we should hit some place in the free state next. It's bad news to operate in the same area all the time. The first time they see a pattern and... Well, the next thing you know, they're waiting for you. Should I go through the cases and count how much we got? Hey, that's bad luck. Now, when we're up in the cottage, there'll be plenty of time. Ah. Well, Jane, honey, about a year from now, we'll be able to retire and live like royalty. If the cops are as dumb as you think they are. Yeah, they are. You can stake your life on that. Tiger's right, Jane. They're not going to go looking up in the mountains for us. The few people we do know around here... Well, they think that we're husband and wife and brother. Yeah, they don't see us leave, and I doubt if they'll see us return. If they do, we can always say we've been shopping on Ladysmith. Who's gonna be suspicious of that? Oh, I suppose you're right. It's just that your optimism is unnerving at times. Hey, it's nice up here. Look, Judy, you can see the tarred road. I'm hungry. Can't you think of anything other than your stomach? We've missed our lunch now, and Mum's going to be very angry with oh, us. Oh, stop worrying. Hey, look at that big bird up there. I bet it's an eagle. I don't care. Let's go home, Martin. No. Oh, please. I want to watch that eagle for a while. It, it must have an F somewhere up that cliff. Oh, go by myself. Okay, tell Mum I'll be back before dinner. Oh, come with me, Martin, please. No, I want to sit here. I'm frightened by myself. Stupid girl. What's there to be frightened of? Oh, I don't know. Animals and things. Oh, all right. Sit here with me for ten minutes or so, and we'll go back together. Ten minutes, then. What are you doing? Pinched one of Dad's cigarettes. Don't tell anybody. Promise. It doesn't matter to me. If you turn into a dwarf, I won't care. To tell you the truth, I pinched three. <coughs> oh, that's better. It doesn't sound better. <clears throat> Look at that white car in the distance. It's coming towards us. Looks like a toy from up here. Wonder where it's going. Daddy says there are a lot of small cottages higher up on the mountain where people stay. Gee, it's moving fast. What's the big hurry, Jane? Oh, why worry? There's no fuzz along here to stop us. But be careful, huh? There's a sharp turn left down in the dirt road in a minute or two. I know the way, Tiger. Haven't I been living here for the last two months? Okay, okay, so you know the road. That don't mean you can drive like a nut. I may be dumb in some ways, Tiger, but I can handle a car better than most. Isn't that why we chose you as driver? Well, don't get uptight with Tiger. He's just thinking how, how awful it is. Hey, look, there's a turn off, Jane. Slow down, you darn fool. There's no brakes, Tiger. The handbrake. Hey, look out. My turn. We're going to hit those rocks. Well, ain't that just great? At this stage of the game, too. Oh, sorry, fellas. I couldn't help it. Yeah, yeah. The handbrake pulled me over to the one side. If you hadn't been gone so dark fast. Not much damage. I'll try the engine. Hey, Frank, take a look underneath. I thought some of those small rocks give us a belt down there. Stop turning it, Jane. Well, what is it? The sump's cracked. Oil filter's gone too. I ain't no expert with engines, boy. What does it mean? Do we go or don't we? Not in this car, we don't. Oh, no, we're in a fix. Yeah, you and your stupid driving. Well, there's no use crying about it, Tiger. I think we'd better start walking. Like heck, I'll walk. We'll stop some car, knock the driver off the head, and make use of it. Isn't that too risky? So close to home? Frank's right. But it's miles, miles, and miles. Not if we cross country away from the road. That way, it's not more than 15 miles. 15 miles? That'll kill me. Well, by road, it's about 25. You see that high ridge over there in the distance? Well, all we have to do is get over that and we're on the path to your cottage. Are you sure? Positive. I'll get the bags out. And we can hide the car in that ditch over there. The sooner we get started, the better. Hey, tell me something, Jane. How oh, you know I'm Frank? 
couple of years. Used to knock around with my kid brother before he ran foul of the fuzz and got himself locked up. Yeah, he seems a bit weak to me, eh? Squeamish. When he was grabbing that door in the bank, he was shaking like a kid in his first day at school. Don't worry about him, Tiger. He's solid, reliable, and loyal. I don't like the way he looks at you. You getting jealous, Tiger? I get upset when punks start trying to horn in on my territory. Meaning I am your territory? Well, you do as you're told, yeah. You have such a masterful way with women. Sometimes I think you're ready to drag me off to a cave by my hair. <laughs> Say, that's quite an idea. Hey! Are you leaving me to do all the work? You're getting well paid. Well, we'd better give him a hand before he goes on strike. Look over there. You see that depression? Yeah, what about it? And we can push the car over there. It's right out of sight of the road. But any passing farm will be able to see it. We can break some of the branches off those trees and put them over. He's right, Tiger. Hey, sure. We can make a good camouflage job of it like we did in our field guns in Korea. Right. Then help me push the car off these rocks. Shh! Get down here behind this rock. Why are you hiding from them, Martin? It's the way they're acting. Look what the two men are doing now. Pushing their car into a ditch. Why? Maybe it's no good. Broken. They could leave it at the side of the road and get it fixed later. Can you hear what they say? Yes, if you'll be quiet. Well? No, I can't make it out. Let's go a bit closer and keep down out of sight. Sort of pretend they, they're spies or something like <laughs> you, you go first. Hey, Jane, stop standing there like a Miss World contender and give us a hand with these branches. Well, these be enough. Oh, enough to keep the car out of sight for a few days. Oh, this is what I call a man's type of job. We're all in this together, so we all row together. Savvy? Here, here. Grab this one. Oh. Okay. Just land them over the roof like, like this. Here, come on, come on. I'll help you. Yeah, right? I thought you were a woman's lip supporter. Funny man. Got any more sour jokes? Don't look around right away, but... What? There are two kids watching us from that bush, directly behind us. This just in our day. What do we do? Well, there's one thing we can do. Grab them before they call out the local vigilantes. And what then? Well, I know you're going to argue about this. But we're going to have to bury them somewhere in these hills. <laughs> There's only one thing harder than choosing a TV set, and that's the company you get it from. Are the prices honestly competitive? With Telljoy, you should. Will you have the option to rent or buy? Can you rent for a bit and then decide to buy? With Telljoy, you should. Can you be sure of same-day service if you phone before 10 a.m., including Saturday? With Telljoy, you should. And will they be around for years to come to honor your guarantee? With Telljoy, you should. Because with no other business but you and TV... It's the fun magazine for every member of the family. Family Radio and TV offers a brand new competition every week with fabulous prizes. Family Radio and TV gives you all the news about all radio and TV programs. It's a whole world of facts and photos, people and places. You'll find out why when you buy Family Radio and TV. Family Radio and TV. joking when you say we're going to bury them somewhere. Maybe I am, and maybe I ain't. But first, we've got to get them. Now, listen, Frank. I'll go on the other side of the car, then dodge into the bushes, coming up behind them. Mm -hmm. Start an argument with Jane and keep them occupied, okay? So how do we argue? We'll make a big show of it. Wave your hands about. Like this. <laughs> okay. You asked for it. And look where your stupid driving got us. 
Suck out here, miles from everywhere. You should have shut up when I was driving. And you can shut up now, for that matter. Tiger's right. You can never trust a woman to do the right thing. <laughs> Look who's talking. Uh, never know you to do anything right. Isn't that right, Tiger? And don't bring him into it. I wish they'd hurry up. We can't keep this up all day. Oh, keep it up. You're doing fine. Oh, right. I'm fed up with the two of you anyway. You're always going on about women. You should take a really good long look at yourself sometime. Yeah. Sorry I ever got mixed up with you. Yeah. Look at them, Julie. They're having a nasty argument. He looks like he's going to hit her. Where's the other man gone? Can you see him? Mm, no. Perhaps he's gone into the bushes. There, gotcha. <gasps> Hey, what are you doing? You're both coming with me. Please let me go. Shut up, you brat. Come on. Uh, Come on uh, and uh, stop stung and I'll hurt you. Oh, there are only a couple of youngsters. Yeah, and a couple of youngsters that can get us locked up for a long spell. And now you've got them, what are you going to do? I've seen the car. They can give us our descriptions to the fuzz and tell them which way we went. They won't be telling the fuzz nothing, see? I mean, they can't when they're dead. We can stick the bodies in the car and then we you can, can take forget them. that plan. Murder isn't my line, especially child murder. Frank's right. How could you even think of it? Don't you see? It's the only thing we can do. It isn't. We can take them along with us and decide later. Ah, you're both crazy. Put that gun away, Tiger. Or do you want Frank and me to turn against okay, you? Okay, okay, okay. We will talk more about this later. These darn kids are a danger to us every moment they're alive. I, I won't tell on you, honest. Just let us go. Shut oh. up, kid. Speak when you're spoken to. Take it easy on them, Tiger. There was no need for that. <laughs> Jane held on to Julie's arm and Frank held Martin. In addition, Frank carried a small case of money and Tiger the larger one. It was rough going across country, but the real endurance test was the climb. The narrow path was steep and very rocky. At some parts, the path had been washed away, leaving only a narrow ledge. When I arrived home from Durban, I found Susan so worried that she'd already detailed all the farm workers to look for the children. At five, one of them reported that he'd found the car near the road. I drove down to look at it and returned to the house. To me, it was little more than an abandoned car until I heard the news over the radio and put two and two together. By then, I was really worried. I sent Susan into town to inform the police, then set out with Sipo Zondi, one of my workers, whom I knew to be a good tracker. We were both armed with torches and rifles. Though there was little chance of picking up the trail before morning, I couldn't bear to be idle. Meanwhile, my quarry had gone to ground shortly after dark in an old abandoned hut to wait till morning. Julie and Martin were tied back to back so as to prevent them escaping. As dawn broke, they were woken by a gentle shake and a soft, whispered voice. Shh. Don't make any noise. I'm going to untie you. Honest, you, you're going to let us go. Shh, don't say any more. As soon as you're free, creep to the door, then run for your lives. Just a bit more. That's right. Thanks a lot. Do, do me one favor for this, okay? Yes. Say you were lost on the mountain all night. You haven't seen her. All right. And thanks. Well, off you go then. Goodbye. And good luck. Thank you. Uh, hey, Jane. Hey, Jane, where are, what, what are you doing? Go back to sleep, Tiger. It's all right. All right? All right. Hey, what are those darn kids? <sighs> What's wrong? The kids have gone. They must eh? have got loose during the night. You just let them loose, you mean? Oh, don't be stupid, Tiger. Would I do a thing like that? Because you felt sorry for him, that's why. I don't know. You just can't trust a woman. Where are you going? Put that gun away. Yeah. I'm going out to get them. Oh, Frank, for heaven's sake, stop him. I'm beginning to wonder why I got myself involved in this mess. If he catches the kids, he'll kill them. If he doesn't, the cops will be on our trail in a few hours. Just stop where you are. I can see you. Quick into the bushes. You can't get away. Come back here. What are we going to do? He knows where we are and he has a gun. Listen, you run straight on, keeping among these bushes. I'll go off to the right and try to head him away from you. All right? But, but I'll get lost. See down there on the other hill. Mm. The tree standing alone. I'll meet you there. Hurry. Uh, but Marty. Stay right where you are, little girl. 
Don't make one move. Ah, Marty! That's right, and I can't have my hair. We'll stop oh, you running, huh? Oh, no, please, you're hurting. Well, that's just what I'm trying to do. Just so she'll scream and bring your little brother back. Run, Marty, run! Shut up! I got your sister, son. And if you're not back here by the time I count to ten, I'm going to blow her pretty little head off. And I ain't kidding, boy. Are you ready? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. That's right. Come closer. Come on. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Gotcha. You're going to kill us anyway, aren't you? Now you come to mention it, yes. Well, so you got them. They're good. We don't want them going off and telling tales. You just go back to the hut, Frank. Let me deal with this. No, you don't, Tiger. I'm not having that. You ain't maybe, but I am. Now run off and leave this to me. Frank, you down there? Yeah, come on down. I'm warning you now. Kill one of those kids and I swear I'll kill you. So that's the way it is, huh? You're looking for an excuse so you can have the money to yourself. Is that it? Now, don't be stupid. Of course it isn't. I just don't want to be an accessory to murder. We'll take the kids with us to the cottage, grab our things and go and hide out somewhere else. I heard all that, and I agree with Frank. It makes sense. It was you that let them go, wasn't it? Well, I don't trust a woman around me at times like this. I never did. Cry yourself down, Tiger. And point that gun away from me. <laughs> Tiger, you... you... Why'd you shoot her like that and... and... I got a good mind to do the same for you. Now grab hold of these kids. Oh, give me that gun! Hey, Jack, what are you doing? Hey, I'm in, I'm in. Run, Judy, come on! Sippo, Zondi and I had found their trail during the night and had arduously followed it. We were already at the hut when the first shot was fired. We both ran towards the sound, as though by instinct, Martin and Julie, hand in hand, had run towards us. Dad! Dad! Oh, thank heavens you're safe. He's over there, somewhere, with a gun. And he wants to kill us. Is he alone? I thought there were three of them. It, it, it was horrible. He killed them because they wanted to stop him from shooting Yeah, us. okay, I get the picture. I want you two to stay here with Sifo. The police should be here soon. Where are you going, Dad? Man hunting. Be careful. He's mad, I think. I'll be careful. Now, none of you move from here. I hazarded a guess. When we'd looked in the hut earlier, I noticed the two cases, which obviously contained the spoils of the bank raid. With luck, Tiger Barnett wouldn't run far without it. I was right, but too late. When I stepped into the clearing and cautiously looked into the hut, the cases had already gone. Disappointed, I quickly glanced around for a vantage point. It presented itself in the shape of a ledge a few feet up the cliff face. I worked my way up onto it and looked around, waiting for a telltale movement. I saw a figure dart from one rock to another, and I felt the hair on the back of my neck rise. I was a sitting duck, a helpless target up there on that ledge, and Tiger knew it. <coughs> Because of the range, his bullets went wide, and his overconfidence was his downfall. In retaliation, I fired once. <laughs> and he went down. I waited, cradling my rifle, but he didn't move. When I was certain he wasn't trying to play a trick, I dropped down and went over to the body. My bullet had drilled him neatly between the eyes. A real hunter's shot. Beside him lay the bags, one of them open, spewing its valuable contents. A few thousand lousy rand that had cost three lives, and very nearly five. The wind blew some of the notes away as a searching police helicopter circled the valley. Second, I didn't bother to touch them. Instead, I slowly walked back to where I had left my children. Ain't it nice 
I bought it with my slice. Come on into the MBS and get your slice. I got it in a trice. It's easy with your slice. I got my slice. They treat you very nice. Come on into the MBS and get your slice. It cost a pretty price, but I got it with my slice. Come on into the MBS and get your slice. Gunston, superbikes at ball door. You scratch hard round the bend, turn it on to 270 Ks and you're out front, untouchable. You're close to the things men rate great, like Gunston Toasted. Gunston cigarettes are made from the best tobaccos a man can get for that rich, rewarding, toasted taste. Get closer to flavor with Gunston Toasted. At the investigation later, it was learnt that Tiger Barnett was an American hoodlum who had come to South Africa under the impression he would find things easier. He'd picked up Jane Hadlow and Frank Knowles, who were just a pair of petty crooks, and had intended to use them to back him up on a series of bank robberies. Had they been successful, it's unlikely that he would have allowed Jane and Frank to live long enough to enjoy their ill-gotten gains. He was that kind of man, a born killer. Well, it's nice and quiet around here again now. I'm hoping it stays like that. My Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.